Cry out to the Holy Spirit. Cry out to him that is able to keep you. Cry out to him that is able to restore and renew your mind. Cry out to him that is able to preserve you. Cry out to him. Yes, 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 Cry out to him that is able to repair you. Yes, Abba. Cry out to him. Yes, Abba. Yes, Abba. Cry out to him. Cry out to him that is your redeemer. Cry out to him that is your salvation. Cry out to him that is your strength. Hallelujah. You are welcome. You are welcome, almighty God. Yes. Yes, yes, Abba, we welcome you, Abba Yah. Yes, Abba Yah. Have your way. Have your way, Abba. Have your way, Abba. Yes. Have your way. You are welcome. You are welcome.
That your kingdom would go forth. That your kingdom, O Abba Yah, would move forward. Abba Yah. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, you more Yes, you are, Almighty Yah. The wind in my lungs. Yes, you are, Almighty Yah. You are real unto us, O Abba. We depend on you, Almighty Yah. You are we are nothing without you, O oh Abba. The crown I'm standing Your Rua on brings us life. You breathe a soul into us, O oh Abba Yah. You are real, Lord, to us. Your thoughts define me. Hallelujah. You're inside of me. You are on us. Your works are seen, O oh Abba Yah. Yah, you are our reality. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Abba. I belong to you. Thank you, Abba. Yah. Thank you. Abba, I belong to you. Thank you. You're more real. You're more real than the wind, the wind in my
Your thoughts define me, Daddy. Your thoughts define me. You're inside of me. You are my reality. Oh,
I give you honor, I give you praise, I give you everything that you deserve, I give you honor, I give you praise, I give you everything. That you deserve. I give you everything. Yes, Abba. I give you everything. Yes, Abba. Everything. I give you everything. Everything, Abba. Everything. I give you everything. Everything. Everything, Abba. Yes, Abba. I give you me. Yes, Abba. With all my heart. With all my strength yes. and with all my mind, yes, I will. give us day by day my daily bread. I will obey because your word is true. Oh, oh. Accept our praise. That's and our why worship. I give you honor. Give you honor. I give you praise. Give you praise. I give you everything. Every worship that you deserve. I, you deserve. I give you honor.
Alpha and Omega. Yeah, you are mighty. The glory and the honor, it belongs to you. The beginning and the end. Yeah, you are mighty. The glory and the honor, it belongs to you. I want to know more you. I want to know, know you as we dive in and tap in and press in. Know, know, we shift the atmosphere. Know, we shift and we change things. Know, things can't stay the same when you worship the Most High God. Know, know, when you tap into the to the Ruach. Know, when you move and dive in and dwell in that secret know, place. Know, Things can't be the same. Your situation looks different. Your mind is renewed. The things that were bothering you no longer bother you when you realize who the creator is. You're worshiping him. You're acknowledging his greatness. No, 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 The prophets got themselves in a prophetic state in several different ways, different tools. The song was one of them. Anytime when Israel went before and they went into battle and they moved, the psalmist always went first. They always set the atmosphere. They always made way for the spirit, for the Ruach to move. That's why we worship Yah, because he is great. And in worshiping him, we move in him and he moves through us. Hallelujah. 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 All right. We're about to um, bring in Shabbat with reading of Bereshit, Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Hallelujah. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it and Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified yes. it because that in it yes. he rested from all his work which Elohim created and made hallelujah, hallelujah. To, hallelujah. to Devarim Deuteronomy 6 9 through 9 through 4 and this we'll read in the Shema Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one, and you shall love Yahuwah Elohei with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words, which I command you this day, shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children. And you shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by your way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shalom aleichem. I greet every one of you in peace. I come to you in peace, and I thank you that we are able to be in the assembly before the presence of the Most High Yah. All oh, yeah. praise, all honor, all esteem, all gratitude, yes. all the glory goes to the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Abba Yah, that we made it to another Shabbat. You are yes. faithful unto us, O oh Abba Yah. You keep us, you provide for us, you protect us. You cause us to have victory in you. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I uh I take that you all had a uh a blessed week. Um, even in your trials and tribulations, you made it through and you're making it through. And those trials and tribulations are to do nothing more than to push you back towards the creator of the universe. 
So you had a blessed week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to move forward. Um, unless anybody, I don't know why I'm doing this, but unless anybody has something they want to share. If anybody has something that they want to share, whether it be a testimony, whether it be uh, prayer, uh, feel free to do that at this time. Feel free to do that at this time. Hallelujah. Please don't be shy. Please uh, don't operate in the peer, a spirit of pride. Um, this is the time for it in the midst of the assembly where the Most High meets us and tabernacles with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I just wanted... I didn't. I don't have nothing to share, but this was on my heart, and he gave it to me, and that's crazy because I wasn't gonna say nothing. But hey, uh, I just want to ask everybody to just give him a praise, just a a cry out. That's what he's telling me. Everybody unmute y'all mics and just give a cry out, a shout to him. Just give yeah. it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise on the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. You, you are holy. You are righteous and you are solid. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, Abba. Glory, Abba. Thank you, Abba. Glory, Abba. You deserve it all, Abba. You deserve it all, Abba. All praise to you, O great King. Hallelujah. All praise to you, Abba. Thank 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 you, Abba. For yielding to the spirit of the most high yeah. yes. um, Cause that was a sentiment even before everyone logged on for us to cry out to worship in unity. Yes. So that is only confirmation. Yes. Um, the most high is pleased when his children cry out to him. He's yes. moved when his children cry out to him. He responds when his children cry out to him. Praise us. Just like a, just like a good father. Mm. If I hear my daughter cry downstairs, I'm coming. Yes. How much more the creator of the universe Come to on. his creation. When we cry out to him in praise, when we cry out to him even in need, he responds. Yes. The father knows the voice of his creation, <laughs> the voice of mm. his children. Mm. So Toda Rabbah, for yielding yourself to move by the Ruach HaKodesh. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. This is still definitely, we get uh, move uh, further and further closer to Shavuot, uh, Pentecost, as we're counting the Omer, we're still in the Passover season. Yeah. And we do know that our ancestors cried out to the Most High. And he heard our cry and he delivered us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All uh, right. Now we just want to uh, take the time out to uh, reach out to everybody that's on the Zoom, who's been on the Zoom, uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, that we're all on the same level, that we arrive to our understanding together. Um and just want to make sure uh, to remind you that this is class. This is not church. Um, so we want to ask uh, those that are here, if anybody would like to share their understanding thus far of the Passover season, um, what is Passover or can they give an understanding of what Passover is to them? So we want to open the floor for anybody for that. Also, um, opening the floor for those who want to share their understanding and also for those who have questions. Um, it's important that you ask the questions in this setting because I'm sure somebody else has the same question. Yes. We always want to make this a welcome environment for you to learn. Learning is a skill. And you have to operate in the skills of learning. One of the tools and the skills of learning is asking questions. Yes. 
Yes. Those that ask questions in their youth and won't be quiet, those are the people who are going to run things. Those are the people who will have wisdom beyond their years because they ask questions. Yeah. So please, please, please either share what you do know so that we can see where you are or ask a question. Thank you. Yes. So how about this? Let me ask the question. <clears throat> what does Pesach represent? Can I speak? <laughs> it represents the Exodus. There we go. Yeah, the Exodus and yes. the fact that the Most High didn't destroy the firstborn of Israel. Instead, he just... Instead, the angel of death took away the firstborn of the Egyptians. Yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. Can you add to that any? I mean, we eat unleavened bread and lamb and bitter herbs that day as a memori memorial to that to the Pesach because we can't really celebrate it anymore because we don't have a priest, but we can memorialize it. And we're supposed to teach our children why we memorialize it, um, explain to them what the Most High has done for our people and what he's planning to do is not only what he's done in the past, but also what he's going to do because it also memorializes the future for yeah. us as a people who are in still in our land of captivity. Oh, praise God. Oh, oh, praise. Yeah. So um, Akoti Kerlin uh, mentioned matzah. She mentioned lamb. She mentioned bitter herbs. Can anyone um, expound on either of those three or does anyone have a question? When we all silent, I assume that everybody know exactly what those things represent or exactly what Pesach is. Please, please, please ask questions. <clears throat> I don't know exactly what it is. Barely. I'm, I'm not, a, I'm, I don't know exactly what it is. I yeah, I should, should now, you, is there a way for you to get closer to your mic? Because we, we definitely want to hear your question, but we can't hear you. Barely. I'm going to put the check. There you okay. go. Okay. Thank you. What it what it sounded like she was saying is uh she was saying that she she's not a uh, really sure about um what it means but um she want to learn. Our oh, praises. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for being transparent and bold enough to speak. We appreciate that. Those are the first lines signs of wisdom. Wisdom starts with a why. She said, "I need you to break it down for me, please." Hallelujah. Which, which aspect of it? The Pesach or the three elements? <clears throat> oh. Will do. Will do. Have you, have you, let me ask you this. Have you seen the previous teachings on it? She said one. Okay, okay. I think that was the uh, matzah. I know who this is. This is my sister-in-law, okay. Nikki. Okay. I think, did you see the matzah one, Nikki? So what, what we'll do, um, we, we're going to forward you the teachings on it, but also... I would like for Maury Kevin to give a brief synopsis of what Pesach is. Okay. 
So when we look at uh, Pesach, <clears throat> Passover, um, we do see that the children of Israel were in uh, Egypt and they were in bondage in Egypt. And the Most High chose Moshe. He chose out of his people a deliverer to deliver his people that they may come to a place to worship him. Yeah. And in him choosing this deliverer, he gave the deliverer the exact way to uh, bring us out. And we were to obey and follow these commandments or these instructions that Yah gave the deliverer for our deliverance. One of the objects of our deliverance was the lamb, the Passover lamb. And he said to kill the lamb and to put the blood on the door. So when we killed the lamb and put the blood on the door, it was a representation or a sign. He said, it will be for you a sign that when I see the blood, I will pass over you because he was sending in the destroyer to destroy all of the firstborn of Egypt. Why? Because we are Yah's firstborn. And so because uh, Pharaoh was treating Yah's firstborn harshly, Yah said, well, I'm going to treat your firstborn harshly. So he exact judgment on his firstborn. Also accompanied with the lamb, he told us, gave us strict instructions to eat matzah or unleavened bread. And we understand that leaven has a uh, a small piece of leaven. When you begin to enter it in a dough, it, it causes the dough to increase or rise up. So we could see leaven being a symbol, a symbol of sin. A small amount of sin in our life can create a... Uh, um, a great uh, displeasure to the most high. The little bit of sin that's in our life can, life can cause us to be out of step with the most high. So we see matzah as sin, uh, or not matzah itself, leaven as sin. So Yah told us to eat unleavened. Also, we do find out as we did study that when we couple matzah with the hay, matzah with the aleph at the end, is us seeking for divine favor of the Most High. We were seeking uh, divine favor from the Most High in that, that we would be found righteous in His sight. Uh, also, after unleavened bread, He moved us into first fruits. First fruit was the first of our harvest. The Most High commanded that you bring the first of your harvest, the first of everything, <clears throat> and he would present it as a wave offering. He'd bring it to the priest. They would present it as a wave offering. They would raise it up and present it as a wave offering before the Most High. And if the Most High accepted the first fruit, then everything after that would be accepted by the Most High and it would be blessed. Hallelujah. And in the counting of that, where we are now in the counting of the Omer, he said, after the first fruit, count for you seven Shabbats. And then a day after the Shabbat, which is 50 days to get to a place where we call Shavuot, uh, as Mori Kanayahu brought out last week, that the counting of the Omer is like counting down to the wedding date uh, or, or the feast date or the banquet date. Well, we come to a place where the Most High is drawing us and that we are presented holy and righteous in his sight. And when we get to this place, he's going to give us uh, the exact uh, the thing for the covenant that we were going to go into with him, mm -hmm. which were the commandments. So he gave us the commandments, <laughs> which were the, the sign of the covenant of going in with the Most High. So in uh, just a, a simple breakdown with that, I hope I was clear uh, with that, just an overall perspective of the Passover season. That's what we see in the Passover season. Mm -hmm. uh, the lamb, the matzah, the first fruit, the counting of the omer, uh, and to Shavuot. Hallelujah. Was there any questions, questions about that? Go ahead. Um. My question is, why he chose a lamb? Why it couldn't be like a cow or a chicken or anything else? You said, why did he choose the lamb and not the chicken? <laughs> because the, yeah. most high, cause the most high don't like chicken, nephew. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. 
<laughs> I'm just messing around. Uh, so when we look at culturally, okay, I see, I see you, Nikki. Said, okay, that was good breakdown. Thank you. Um, when we look at our ancestors and the culture, our ancestors uh, in that day, that was the that was their increase. They had the lamb and the goats. Uh, that was the livestock that they normally had um in that area so they were more sheep herders and and goat herders so this is something that they definitely had in abundance also when we look at sheep and lamb their representation they need someone to tend to them continually so a lamb or a sheep they can't really they don't they don't protect themselves they need a protector so we are as the lamb or the sheep of the most high. He's our protector. He's the one that watches over us um, continually. When we look at the, when we look at the, uh, what, what do you call it? The sheep herder uh, mm -hmm. of the, of, of the herd, mm -hmm. the sheep herder himself would put himself in harm's way for the, for the, for the livestock or for the flock. He would fight like David was a sheep herder. He said, I fought the lion and the bear uh, that tried to come and attack my father's uh, flock. And so that's how the most high is for us. So it's all symbology and a representation of that. Uh, does that answer your question enough, nephew? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sister, uh, uh, sister uh, Caroline? Was I found out? I looked. I was going to ask you a question when you said first fruits. I didn't remember what that was and when that was. When did we celebrate that? But I looked back on my notes and I saw that it's the it was last Sabbath, right? The the day after the Shabbat, so it was Sunday. Yeah, we we introduced it and we and we uh, did the teaching, oh. but it was the day after, so. Mm -hmm. That, that's when it took place. Yes. Yes. And so if anybody's paying attention or watching uh, other uh, Israelites, uh, as we brought this out again about the first fruits, um, <clears throat> most people believe in the day after unleavened bread is a hot Shabbat. They call it a hot Shabbat. And some people count after that day. But we want to literally look at the text and see what the text says. And it simply says, you never see anywhere in uh, in, in the Torah, anything about high Shabbat. So we're counting, it says after the Sabbath. So seven days we do unleavened bread. And then we get to the Sabbath and the day after the Sabbath is the first fruit. Oh yeah. And that's where we, we, we're counting at. And so what day... If anybody, if last Sunday was the first day, what day are we on now? Seven. Oh, yeah. Six. Six. Mm -hmm. That's right, six. Hallelujah. Tomorrow will be the seventh day. Seven. Yeah. Sundown tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, yeah. and to, to try and <clears throat> simplify it even more to Pesach, to the first fruits, to the Omer, um, you want to look at it as a husband and a bride. So the bride is Israel. The bride was in a bad place prior to becoming the bride. She was in a bad place. She was in a difficult situation, a bitter place, hence the bitter herbs. And the Most High comes in and brings her out or delivers her from that bitter place. And in the bringing out, she got some stuff with her now. Now she still has the mindset of the previous relationship she was in. So the counting of the Omer is to prepare her for a new mindset, for a new type of person to be with, for a new type of husband, for a new type of man, if you were. Um, so the counting of the Omer is him courting her, him learning her, her learning him that she can trust him, that he will provide for her until we get all the way up into the engagement when he says, okay, she's ready. I want you to be my wife. And that's what Shavuot is. He gives you the symbol of the engagement, which is the Torah. So in its simplest form, that's how you want to look at it in its simplest form. And then we add things to it to give you better understanding. I hope that made sense. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any other questions? Yeah, so if today is the sixth day, did, did, did that change the Sabbath now? No. No, 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 no. Today is the Shabbat, but today is the okay. sixth day of the counting of the Omer. Tomorrow will be the seventh. Oh, okay. No, we don't change the Shabbat. No man can do that. I no, because he said that. it's the sixth day. I thought, I thought that... So that Sunday was not a Shabbat. It was just first fruit day. It was just first fruit. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. yes ma sorry, sorry if we confuse you. Sorry if we confuse you. Definitely okay. not. We're just counting up to 50. We're just counting 50 days. Yep. I have a question. If We're supposed to count, at least from what I understand, we're supposed to count the Omar each day at sunset. Is that right? sundown well, so the six, oh, so would, does that mean that this day began i don't know last night yeah correct so okay. so but for all intents and purposes because remember this is a commemoration this is a rehearsal until we get all the details you just count the day like you count the days we know the shabbat starts okay Friday at day at, at sunset and then Saturday at sunset, you know. So if you want to be meticulous with it in that nature, I'm with that. You know, if you know better, you do better. But if you don't get that understanding, you know that today is Shabbat. So tomorrow, whenever tomorrow comes, whether you see the sun or whether the Shabbat, the, the day, the night, I mean, excuse me, the sun goes down, that's a new day. So whether you want to count it tonight or whether you want to count it in the morning, that's the seventh Omer but not the seventh day. We just okay. counting days now. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Any other question? Hallelujah. Oh, I, I want to make this statement if there's no other questions. Um, once again, we're not trying to really beat a dead horse. I think sometimes when we get to understanding these things, we only have a certain portion of understanding and uh, we've only learned it in not in its sum totality. <clears throat> and so the reason why we're trying to continually uh, repeat and understand this season is so that next year when we come around to Pesach, we completely have a full understanding. We, we don't want to leave no stone unturned concerning the Pesach, the first fruit, the unleavened bread, uh, the counting of the Omar or, or Shavuot. So that way, when we celebrate it next year, we have a complete understanding of where we are. And then maybe next year, one of you guys can teach it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I vote Akoti Caroline. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so oh, that's yeah. why. Remember, this is class. This is class. I do want to add. I do want to add that. Um, like, I mean, just everything that was already said. Um, basically, this isn't this isn't church. So, man, we got two more rays that um that's before us that can actually um teach really in depth and i i personally have been learning from them um for about three years and sometimes they can talk over my head so i think it's so important that everybody ask questions because <clears throat> as the teachings go on they're going to continue to build on the information that they assume that you already have so if you do not ask questions you're going to get lost and me personally, they know I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to ask and I'm going to ask because I need to know so that they don't move past me. I don't want to get left. And we do not want anyone on this, um, in this to be lost at any point in time, because this is, this is I mean, we had a beautiful place with this, um, with this because we're in the beginning Hallelujah. We're in the beginning of the year we starting a whole new thing in the beginning mm. so we make sure that we know what we know because we don't want to assume that you know and then we continue to grow and yes. you're still in the beginning stages so 
ask your questions all the time and no one's going to be upset with you because that's the, that's the whole point of this is to learn and make sure that everybody has the understanding. I, I will say this before we own, um, and he, what he just said was absolute truth. Um, that's the importance of this. And, um, and he's right when he says sometimes we assume that you know if you don't say nothing and we'll go on and you will be lost. And we can't have that. We can't have that. But I will add to that and put the caveat. Make sure you're taking notes. Yes. Make sure you're reading. Make sure that you're just not going and listening to us and then that's it. This is not church. We can't stress enough. This is not church. You're going to have to fight and dig for your own freedom. The freedom of your mind. So we're going to give you the tools, the best of our ability. We're going to lead you in the right direction to the best of our ability, but you have to do work too. This is not, I give you the answer. I'm going to point you in the right direction to the best of my ability. And you and the most high going to come to a conclusion. So you make sure you're reading. You make sure you take notes. You make sure that before you ask that question, you have exhausted all that you can do. And all of this is going to work out um, in your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nisa. Tyra. You have a question, sweetie? Yeah. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask, uh, I feel like you said something about this before, but why are people celebrating Passover in the continent of Omar on different days? It's like, I've seen some people on Facebook and they just now celebrated um, um, Passover. And so? So the reason why people count it differently is because coming out of our bondage, we are coming out of a 400 plus years of a mental slavery, a physical slavery. We're coming into the awareness of who we are mm -hmm. and so it's a lot of information that is out there you have some people who worship by the lunar calendar you have some people who worship shabbat like their shabbats don't fall on like a normal seven day shabbat like we do they do a moon shabbat so every every time it's a new moon it's a shabbat uh and they go like that from that calendar um and then you have just different information out there. Uh, I will say this, to pay attention to what you're learning right now, because you will see and you will hear different things. It's not about the differentiality in it, but it's about us doing it. There are going to be differences how we do it, but as long as we do it, we are in the land of our captivity and the most high will bring us to a place in uh, pure freedom. He will give us a pure language, a pure tongue, and he'll take us to a place where we keep it the exact way that he wants. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Also, also niece, there are stages of understanding. We're all in this journey. We're all on this walk. If we are Torah observing and we're trusting the Most High Yah, and we get revelations at different points in the journey. Some people's study habits are different. So like Moray just said, the goal is to try to the best of your ability to guard the Torah. And if he said, keep the pace up, come with a first fruit offering, uh, uh, count the omen, if you're doing it, that's where your blessing lies, the doing. So some people may do it here, some people may do it there, but the, the only difference is where they are in the journey and their level of understanding. But as they're doing it, as long as they keep doing it and keep digging and keep seeking the most high Yah, all of us gonna mess together eventually. Yes. Right? 
So don't get caught up in the differences. Have the understanding that what's the similarity? They're counting the omen. Okay? All right? All right. So any other questions? Uh, I had another question. Yes, ma'am. Never mind, I forgot it. <laughs> all right, hallelujah. All right, with that said, we're going to um, shift gears, all right? I want you to pay attention, and I want you to just listen to what I'm about to read, okay? Um, it's about a page and a half of information, and I want to read it to you before I go into uh, today's lesson. <clears throat> the title of this page is called The Rules of the Game. Those who play the board game Monopoly might know the official rules printed on the box, but they might also be familiar with alternative sets of rules. How many of y'all got different rules for Monopoly at y'all house? Everybody do. Nowhere do the official rules suggest that $500 must be added to the free parking after everyone <laughs> lands on that space and collects the money, nor do the rules yet, uh, deal with the special cases of the player who rolls double once or double six times, double ones or double sixes, excuse me. Yet almost all Monopoly players have conventions that determine how these situations should be handled. What is crucial is that before the game starts, all participants agree to the rules governing the particular game. Otherwise, chaos ensues. Similarly, the way of reading suggested here will emphasize what the Bible meant when it was written. The importance of proper rules or genre for understanding the Bible is most easily illustrated through the following examples. They presume for illustrative purposes, let's presume for illustrative purposes only the existence of someone who wholly different culture from a wholly different culture who is perfectly proficient in the English language. So he's saying, let's put in our mind somebody who's from a completely different culture, a different place, and but they are proficient in the English language. They understand grammar, they know all the words, and they know um, context for the English language, but they're not from here, all right? Keep that in mind. Having mastered the grammar of English and an English dictionary, this individual, let's call her Marta, would be comparable to the modern scholar who has complete mastery of biblical word use and grammar, which incidentally is impossible. So he's saying, if you're from a different country, if you're from a different culture, but you've mastered the English language, that's the equivalent of reading the Bible because the Bible is from a different culture, from a different language, from a different time. <clears throat> Marta will illustrate three situations that indicate how mastery of a lexicon or word use and grammar alone are insufficient for reading in the most comprehensive sense. So just because you know the words, just because you know the grammar, that doesn't mean that you have complete understanding. Let's imagine that Marta arrives at my house as I am reading some poetry. I happen to turn to a poem called Subway translated from Japanese. It begins every day I step into a coffin with strangers. Reading even this first line, I sigh in pleasure after all I grew up in the New York and traveled on my trains during rush hour, unable to breathe, feeling like I was buried alive with strangers for an hour. Marta, however, has no comprehension of this experience for at least two reasons. She has never experienced the subway. Just as, <clears throat> excuse me, just as I am reading some poetry, forgive me, feeling like I was buried alive with strangers for an hour. Marta, however, has no comprehension of this experience for at least two reasons. She has never experienced the subway just as significantly as she has never encountered poetry and thinks that these initial eight words about entering coffins with strangers describe either a strange ritual or a kinky practice, forgive me, 
Though she understands the words by reading them literally, she misunderstands their meaning in this particular context. Only after Marta learns about subways and more importantly about genre conventions, for instance, that literature presented in short lines is poetry, that poetry uses metaphors and that metaphors should be interpreted in a particular way. Only then will she understand those eight words. Reading that line of poetry thus extends far beyond a phonetic process or even looking up each word in a dictionary. Another scenario from a later in the day, Marta is looking over my shoulder as I sort the day's mail. I sort onto two piles, one with notices, typically in red, such as urgent, open immediately, the other lacking such notices. But when trash, when I trash everything from the urgent open immediately pile, Marta is bewildered. She knows how to read, but nothing in her te technical language preparation taught her about genres of mail. Had she learned that the words urgent, open immediately, combined with other markers, typify a genre that will call jump mail, then she would understand. But this lesson, which has to do with social aspects of reading and writing and how we as readers pick up on clues, what biblical scholars call form critical markers, is typically only learned through experience within a particular social group. For the final example, examine that Marta watches, imagine that Marta watches as I read the Sunday Boston Globe. She clearly observes that the newspaper is comprised of various sections with different layouts, but does not know the significance of these differences. Specifically, she doesn't know that Doonesbury, printed on the first page of the comics, must be read differently than the first page of the first section. Though both sections contain the same words, even the same personal names, we know through experience that they convey different information or have different goals. The first page means to convey facts that comics are intended amused or fiction. Martha, however, has no developed awareness of context and genres, how they might inform what something really means or how it should be read. So she likely would use Doonesbury as a source for news in the same way that she uses the first page. I hope that y'all follow, but I'm gonna break it down. In order to read the biblical text, you have to under, have the understanding of the genre. You have to have the understanding of the time. You have to have the understanding of the rules of engagement when it comes to linguistics, the culture, and the language. If we are not attempting to learn these things, we will be behind, and unfortunately, we will never get the full understanding to the best of our ability of what the Bible and what Yah is telling us. And with that said, I'm going to share my screen. What if you could do That's SEO smarter and faster? All right, here we go. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. Can. All right. Before we move on, did that make sense? Not necessarily what I read, but what I explained. Yes. 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 Good, good, good. All right, here we go. Gimel. The first character is the Gimel in the in how you would see it written today. The second looks like an L, but it symbolizes a foot. Um, and it's the third letter of the Aleph Bape. The L is the pictograph or what some people call paleo. All right, so Gimel, reward and punishment. All right, the reason why I read what I read and gave you that brief synopsis of, uh, of the reading is because um, in all things that we read in the biblical text, there are levels. Uh, there are surface levels. There are levels that are deeper than that, and it continues to get deeper. And there's a term for that. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, this is going to be a twofold teaching. We are going to learn about Gimel, the third letter of the 
or the third character of the Hebrew alphabet. And we're also going to learn about a uh, exegesis uh, tool called Pardis. All right. So Pardis. Move this out the way. Pardis is a theory of biblical exegesis first advanced by Moses de Leon. The term sometimes also rendered Pardis uh, with the large P-R-D-S is an acronym formed from the initials of the following four approaches. Is anyone other than the mores on the line familiar with Pardis? Please speak because I can't see any faces. No. Okay, all right. I am not. No. Okay, all right. No. All right, cool. No. Uh, so we will move forward and I will make sure that I um, move slowly and please stop me if you have any questions. Can you also remind me what exegesis is? So um, exegesis is um, when you get an interpretation from the biblical text based off of the context and the biblical text interpreting itself. So you use the Bible to let you know what the Bible is saying. And you can only do that if you have understanding of context, um, understanding of culture, understanding of language, understanding of time, understanding of uh, the narrative. So exegesis is when you Give an, get an interpretation of the biblical text based off the authorial intent and the interpretation of the Bible itself. So the Bible will tell you what it means if you know how to read it right. And the opposite of exegesis is eisegesis. And that's when you read it and you add something to it. You make it mean what you want it to mean. Is that all right? Yes. All right. I can't get this green thing off my screen. Somebody tell me what to do. At the top where it says you are viewing Beit Shemai Torah screen. Is that no. the top? Oh, you must not see it. It's, it's kind of at the top. It says you are sharing. You are screen sharing. What Ooh. I do is I have somebody else read for me. <laughs> I ain't figured out how to move it either. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. Hallelujah. Here we go. Okay, so, oops, I missed one. Peshat. So, Pardis is P A R D E. P A D R E S. All right, so Peshat. Peshat is the surface or straightforward or the literal direct meaning. An example of that is uh, Thou shalt not kill. We all know what that means, straightforward, right? We have the understanding of that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We understand what that means, straightforward, the surface level, the direct meaning. The direct meaning is don't uh, cheat on your wife. You know, that's the direct meaning. Do not cheat on your wife. Don't go outside the confines of your marriage. All right? Peshat means the surface level understanding when you read something. Everybody writing this down or taking a picture? Pay shot. Everybody say pay shot. Pay shot. Pay shot. Pay shot. All right. All right. So, so often next here, people say the simple push shot or the simple literal understanding of the text. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So now the next one. We have remez. Remez is the hints or the deep allegoric hidden. Oh or symbolic meaning beyond just the literal sense. So this is a level a little bit deeper than the surface level. Um, and for example of that, remez, let's say uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. An example of that, the first one on the surface level is don't cheat on your wife or your husband. Don't go outside of the confines of marriage. The second one is don't serve another God. Don't go outside of the covenant that you have with your Yah because he is your husband. Remember, we just talked about he brought us out from a bad situation, prepared us, and then he engaged or uh, had an engagement to us. Then he married us. So the Peshat is 
the surface, thou shalt not commit adultery. The remez is that which right underneath, thou shalt not serve another Yah, thou shalt not go to another God, thou shalt not break the covenant or break this, uh, break this engagement and go and be with another God. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. I, it makes sense to me. Yes. Yes. Yes, it makes sense. Okay, so Peshach and Remez. Now the next one is Darash. Darash. Darash is from the Hebrew word Darash. Inquire, seek the comparative Midrashic meaning as given through similar occurrences. Bit mid midrash means to study. Okay, it means the studying, you're comparing, you're seeking, you're digging. So when we take words in uh, the biblical text and we do a word study and we compare it to other things, we compare it to other words that are similar to. That's when we come into an even deeper understanding, and that's darash. When you compare it and you find meaning as you um, find similar words or that same word in a different context. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. To study. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you out. No, I was just saying it means to study. Correct. 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 All right. I'm not saying something. I'm not sure. Is someone speaking? Is someone asking a question? I don't see. Okay. Uh, I had asked, no, I had asked, can you repeat it? Because my, so I don't know, my Zoom, um, my volume, I don't know what happened to it when he was explaining the Darash. Okay. So, so the Darash is, uh, it, it means to seek or to inquire. When we're seeking or we're inquiring of something, we're studying, okay? So when you take a word and you break it down in Hebrew and you do a word study and you compare that word to other words that are similar to it or other words that have the same root, that's when you find deeper meaning that you wouldn't find just by reading it on the surface or having the understanding of the of the uh, remez. So the rest is the next level that will give you better understanding as you seek and you study out a matter. Did you hear me? Yeah, so so are, with like you breaking down the matzah, would that fall under this one or would that fall under the, the remez? That it would fall under this one, right? That would definitely fall under this one. That was a perfect example. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, and the final one is sold. Sold is the secret, the mystery. The, the scriptures say, um, uh, uh, what's the word where it says, um, can you reveal the secret things of your law? The secret things, the dark things, those things, when it says dark, it's not talking about demonic. It's talking about things that aren't lit up, things that aren't illuminated to you, things that you can't see. So those are the secret things. So sold is the secret mystery or the esoteric mystical meaning. And mystical isn't something that's uh, warlocks and dragons and witches. Mystical literally means that it's beyond uh, or transcends the level of human understanding. It's something that's required of uh, something greater than you to give you the revelation. Does that make sense to y'all? So the secret things, those are the most esoteric or the deepest things that require a, 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 uh, a seeking for something and then a revelation from a higher source. You can seek, you can seek, you can seek, but until you get revelation from the most high Yah, your seeking is in vain. So that's what sold is, okay? So that's uh, pardis, pardis. So that revelation is the Ruach. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, in my times of prayer, in my times of being in the closet, I've received revelation that no man has given me. And then the Most High will take me to the scriptures to back up the revelation that I have. 
So that's the times when you get the sowed, okay? When you're studying and when you're seeking and then the most high meets you in your seeking and in your study. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Each type of partist interpretation examines the extended meaning of a text. Let me read this real quick, Nisa, and then I will ask you a question. I'm going to answer your question. As a general rule, the extended meaning never contradicts the base meaning. What that means is that if you have an understanding of the word for water, at Peshat, the meaning for the word water should still exist in the Ramez, in the Darash, and in the Saad. It should just extend to it or add to it or give you a different depth of understanding. But it should never, the, the meaning for Peshat of water, it should never mean fire. You understand? It should always have something to do with the principles, uh, with the essence of water. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in Hardis, your understanding from the most surface level to the most esoteric or the most mystical level is going to be something along the same lines, but different levels of severity, different levels of understanding, different levels of insight in that particular word or sentence or parable. Hallelujah. All right. So yeah. Peshat means the plain or contextual meaning of the text. Ramez is the allegorical meaning. Darash includes the metaphorical meaning and Sod represents the hidden meaning. There is often considerable overlap. For example, when legal understandings of a verse are influenced by mystical interpretations or when a hint is determined by comparing a word with other instances of the same word. Okay, Nice. Oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna ask if you can if you can go back to how you say it par hard hard it. Hardest. Hardest? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Go back to where? To the slide. Didn't you have a slide before that? I I'm not sure if I missed it or not. This slide? Was it a slide before that one or that was it? N no, th this was it. The slide that said part is before was like five slides up. Oh, okay. I was making sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. All right. All right. So, Gimel. So, as I said, this is going to be a two part teaching. We are going to dive in the Pardis and try to gain some understanding from that. And Gimel is, the, is a great uh, character or letter to do such. Um, it is full of information it is full um and pregnant with meaning uh it represents so many different things and it is an easy character to do this with niece is your hand still raised do you have another question my bad no worries the gimel is the third character of the hebrew aleph bait the word gimel has the tri-consonantal tri root gimel mem lamed gimel Mem and Lamed, all right? This is the root word for Gimel, which is the Hebrew word for camel, gamel, Gamal. The Hebrew word for camel is Gamal, all right? So in seeing this, we already have some association, right? On the surface level, Gimel means camel. On the surface level, Gimel means camel, all right? So whenever you see this letter, you want to already start associating it with a camel, all right? All right, so what do we see here? If we were to look at this, remember, we are Hebrews. We are functional people. We don't just look at something and describe it as, okay, it got a, a curved neck. It got two humps, four legs, a tail. Uh, it looked like a lamb by the mouth and it's standing in the sand. That's not what we do. <laughs> we look at something and describe its function. Yes. So when we think of camel with whatever knowledge you have of a camel, somebody give me an understanding of what a camel is or what it does. Transportation. Uh, there you go. Very good. Very good. What else? It carries. Also used to carry things. <laughs> Absolutely. So we got transportation. It carries things. What else do we know about a camel? 
it spit on you. That it doesn't need a lot of water. It does not need a lot of water. The spitting part, I'm trying to see how I can make that functional. Maybe if you got somebody coming up trying to steal your stuff, the chemical spit in their eye and they get away. Maybe <laughs> so. So the spitting, uh, nephew, we we gonna we gonna put that in there too. Uh, so we got from Akoti uh, <laughs> Jerry, we have um, to travel. Yeah. I'm not sure who said to carry things. Your and mother. We, okay, Ima. It, <laughs> Ima said to carry things and that they don't need much water. They don't need a lot of nutrition. They uh, can D survive. DJ oh, in the DJ in the chat said it can survive in the desert for a long time. Exactly. So it's it's a survivor. It carries things. Uh, it doesn't need a lot of nutrition. Um, it can it can spit and help defend you. We're gonna we're gonna search that one out. We're gonna search that one out. Um, what else? I think those were the three. Hallelujah. So in this next one, we see another camel. And this uh, almost sums up everything that we said. You see this gentleman packing this camel. Um, and the camel is not tied down. The camel is not harnessed to anything. If the camel wanted to, camels are extremely strong. He can get up and leave. But the camel is yielding to the need of this man and his family. If y'all can see that, he got the camel packed up and he probably put more. Hallelujah. He probably put more. So the camel can carry things. The camel can stay in, in, uh, in inacclimate environments and sustain itself. It doesn't need a lot of nutrients. It doesn't need a lot of water. And it's yielding itself. So on the surface, we see that the camel uh, is strong. It can carry things, doesn't need water, right? That's the pace shot. On the surface level or literal direct meaning, the gimel means camel, which represents a journey to lift up, to carry. In a negative sense, it means pride. We're going to come back to that, okay? But I did, want, I did have to show you that. In a negative sense, it means pride. That's the pashat. The gimel and the remez. The camel is known as an animal that does not reject carrying heavy loads and will walk innumerable miles in extreme conditions to carry its passengers and or cargo to their destination. Thus, the gimel is symbolic for extending kindness. And this word down here, if I have a Hebrew reader, let's sound that out together. So that's gimel, mem, yod, lamed. That's gu. Somebody help me? It looks like it says gim. You want me to go all the way through it? Go all the way through it. Look like it says Give me loat. What's the next word? Ha sadin. Give me loot kasadin. What does that mean? Give me loot kasadin. What does that mean? Is that that's supposed to be a hit? Kindness. That's a loving kindness. Supposed to be a hit. Absolutely. It's supposed to be a hit. So a give hate? me loot kasadin. A hit. A hit. 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 Gimme Lu Kasadin is acts of loving kindness. Thus, the gimel is symbolic for extending kindness, especially towards those who are in lower positions. In regards to a man and a camel in the desert, the man is in a lower position. The man is not suited to be in that environment. The camel is. So he's extending himself to the man. Those who are in a lower I position, can't. less fortunate. I'm sorry. Oh. My bad. I didn't know I was over. I didn't know I was unmuted. That's okay. Especially towards those who are in lower positions, less fortunate or in need. It is said that the camel demonstrates consideration for others before itself. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I so like in this camel. instance, the remez, this is what's um, just deep to the surface. And that's when we just look at the essence of the or the nature of something, all right? And how we can apply on a different level instead of just the physical, all right? So, Ramez. Ramez continued. Gimel is derived from the word gamu, and it's the same um, triconsonantal root. Gimel, mem, lamed. So it's the same word over and over again, which means giving as the reward or recompense. So the gimel 
means both the giving of reward as well as the giving of punishment. In Psalms 103, forgive me, I don't have that up there, but I'm going to read it quickly. Psalms 103 and 2. Psalms 103 and 2 reads, Bless Yahuwah, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. He's asking that Yah would bless him and not forget the benefits. His benefit benefits come when you've done something to get them. It's a reward. So, that word right there is gamula, gamula, all right? So it's the same three letters, gimel, mem, lamed. In Torah, both reward and punishment are intended to give rise to the same result, pointing us toward Yah. So whenever we're going through something, whenever there's a situation where it doesn't seem to be favorable to us, whenever the odds are against us or there's a bill due or there's no food, all of those situations are meant to make you seek the creator. They are meant to make you cry out to the creator. They are meant to turn you from what your focus is on and to focus on him. Sometimes some people got to reach rock bottom before they have the understanding that, okay, I can't do nothing else. Let me cry out to Yah. So the punishment and the reward are designed to do the same thing. It's to rectify the soul that we may receive Yah's light to the fullest extent. If you're not crying out to him in the punishment, if you're not crying out to him in the bad time, if you're not crying out to him in the good time, you will never get to a place to where you can receive Yah's light, his understanding, his blessing to the fullest extent, because you're going back and forth. So everything that Yah allows to happen is to drive you towards him. Once we get that understanding, life is like we got the cheat code. Once you get that understanding, life takes on a new meaning. Everything that happens to us is designed to steer us, point us, cause us to run back to Yah, whether it be praising him for the blessing or crying out to him because of the punishment. Hallelujah. Is that understood? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. The darash. Hallelujah. Gimel is also related to the word gamal which means wean, wean as in weaning a, a puppy or weaning a child, to mature, to grow, develop completely, physical, spiritual, and intellectual, but more so spiritual and intellectual. Bereshit 21 and 8. If we were to read Bereshit 21 and 8, uh, I, I forgive me, I should have spoke to this to you early. Can you go to um, Genesis 21 and 8, please? And uh, Melkot, if you can go to um, Numbers 17 and 8. And uh, Moray Lester, can you go to Psalms 18 and 20, please? So that's Genesis 21 and 8, uh, Numbers 17 and 8, Psalms 18 and 20. Let me know when you're ready. I'm here. I'm ready. Genesis 21 and 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. In this situation, we see a wav, a yod, gimod, mem, lamed, as we've been seeing. Wav means and. Yod means he, whenever it's in the front like this. And we understand that this word right here in this context means weaned. And he was weaned. And he was weaned. Isaac had been given nourishment from his mother at the same time his mother was pulling back, pulling away enough to allow him to mature and grow, to not require her any longer. That's what a weaning is. You're giving and pulling back at the same time. She was giving of herself. So remember, we said that it means loving kindness, giving. She was giving of herself, literally. But at the same time, she was only giving enough and pulling back so that he can mature to grow on to better things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Milka? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, numbers 17 and 8. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And it came to pass that on, on the morrow, Moshe went to the tabernacle of witness and behold the rod of Haran and the, for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloom blossoms and yielded almonds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now remember darash. Darash means to study, to compare, to take words that may not necessarily be the same exact word, but have the same roots or similarities or phonetic sounds are the same. And you compare them, you contrast them, you look at different scriptures or look different texts and you grab the meaning and bring it all together. All right. So in this fashion, we're doing just that. So here it means to wean, to give nourishment at the same time, pulling it away to inspire growth. Here it's the same word. And it says, and he was weaned. So the weaning here is the mature growth or develop completely. So an Aharan staff blossomed and yielded. It yielded. Yielded means to bring something forth, to produce, to give forth ripe almonds. So it matured to a place to where it bared fruit. That's also a weaning. Isaac was matured to a place to where the fruit that he was bearing was he no longer needed his mother. Moray Lester? It says, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. Hallelujah. So here we have a yod, gimel, mem, lamet, and a yod. So when you reach a place of development and maturity in this walk, Yah will begin to reward or recompense you for your righteousness in him. So remember, this is growth or fully development, but we always have to remember that gimal or gimel means to be a giver, a kindness, loving kindness. Give is the key word here. So when you reach a place of development and maturity, when you're weaned in this walk, Yah will begin to reward you, to give unto you what you've done based off of your righteousness and the cleanliness of your hands. Hallelujah. Now, this is an example of derash. The sold, the most fundamental concept of Torah directly related to the meaning of the letter Gimel, and this is how you spell Gimel um, with the letters, Gimel, Yod, Mem, Lamed, is acts of kindness. Gimelu Chasedim. Gimelu Chasedim. Chasedim implies bestowing kindness, while Gimelut, remember, give is to either give and take at the same time implies the removing of that same bestowing. This paradox refers to the ability of Yah to give of himself by way of all creation. He created all things. He gave of himself in creation. While simultaneously removing himself from creation, just as a father must go, must let go of his child in order for the child to walk. So this is symbolized in... When a when a child uh, is walking or on a bike, you first gonna stand by them, but in order for them to walk and only for them to grow, you must remove yourself and step back. These are the things that sometimes we experience, and we like, Abba, wh why can't I hear from you? Where are you? I need you. He's there the whole time, but he's maturing you. He's weaning you. He's weaning you from having the need to have a blessing every time, having the need to hear from every time. When you stay in his word, you encourage yourself and you grow in maturity. You grow spiritually. And that only happens when the father takes a step back. So that's the true meaning, the hidden meaning, the mystic meaning behind Gemel. It's the punishment along with the reward, or the reward along with the punishment, the giving along with the taking back. And when that comes together, that is complete, give me Luke Hasidim, that is complete acts of kindness. If you see someone that's in a position where they are unable to help themselves and you help them, you don't help them continuously. You help them enough and encourage them enough that the way that they can help themselves. Other than that, you're trying to become a God to them, whether you know it or not, and they will never grow to a place 
to where they can go back and do the same thing. Our goal is to emulate the creator. How do we do that? With acts of love and kindness. Hallelujah. Conclusion. Can you go back real quick? Sorry. I'm just gonna take a picture. Thank you. Baby, you don't never have to take pictures. You got I know, this. I know, but I'm still right. This. Hallelujah. <laughs> <clears throat> the letter Gimel represents him that is able, helping him that is unable. The camel helps the man who cannot carry all their stuff, who's not fit to travel those long distances, and who will probably die from thirst. So the gimel represents him that is able, helping him that is unable. It represents spiritual maturity, understanding Yah's economy. Yah's economy is to be a giver. Yah's economy is to trust that the Most High is going to provide no matter the situation because you're giving and your hands are clean. Yah's economy is acts of loving kindness and emulating the creator in acts of loving kindness. So let's read that one again. Gimel represents spiritual maturity, understanding Yah's economy, and emulating the creator in acts of love and kindness. Three is the symbol of stability and balance. Three represents equilibrium between the primary elements of creation, which are air, water, and fire. If you have too much air, too much oxygen, you can die. If there is too much water, you can drown. If there's too much fire, you know what's going to happen. So there has to be equilibrium between the three elements of creation. Otherwise, there will be chaos. Part of this theory, excuse me, part of this is the theory of biblical exegesis. So we use part of this today, or we use Gimel today, to break forth and give you understanding on what Pardis is. There are different levels of the reading. There are different levels to each Aleph Bait. How much more so to the text? How much more so to the instructions of Yah? If each letter has this much depth, how much more so a word? How much more so a phrase? How much more so a sentence? How much more so a a paragraph, how much more so a book of the Bible? This is the understanding that this is a class and not church. The goal is to get you to have an understanding to where you learn on a different level, to where you learn so that the Most High is pleased, where you study to show yourself approved rightly to divide the word of Yah. That's what this is for. So that part is theory of biblical exegesis is a tool so that you can have the understanding that don't stop at the surface, keep digging. Don't stop at remez, keep digging. Don't stop at, uh, 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 what's the next one? Daresh, keep digging. Don't even stop at sold because there's always more revelation. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I ain't going to show y'all that. That was homework, but I don't believe that I'm going to give y'all homework on this. Uh, the goal is for you to have the understanding uh, to apply all these matters. Uh, I will always extend the charts and the slides to you upon request. You have to be willing to study for yourself. You have to be willing to dig for yourself. You have to be willing to seek the creator for yourself. Um, and every decision that you make, whether you do these things or you don't, it's bigger than you. Your family is at risk. Those attached to you are at risk. Um, this teaching is uh, threefold. It's to teach you about Gimel, the third letter. It's to teach you about uh how in depth you need to go into your studies and also is to teach you that you will never learn all that it is to learn. You just keep learning. You just keep adding. You just keep getting different levels of revelation so that you can be a teacher, so that you can bring someone else out of their level of thinking and into freedom. Hallelujah. 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 I think we have something in the chat. Can you give the scripture... Again, I was doing something. Um, yes, I will. 
uh, which scriptures. Can I get the slides? Sure. Um, I'm talking about the scriptures that you had. Uh, the better sheet. Uh, I think it was better sheet. Those scriptures. Uh, if you request the slides, I'll send you all the slides. Okay. Just just send me a text or put it in the chat that you want the slides. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Anything we need to go back thank over? Thank you for this teaching because mm -hmm. when I was first introduced to this letter, Gamel, it said it meant camel, but I didn't understand it because it looked like a giraffe to me. There was mm -hmm. no meaning behind it. Now I get it. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. 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 This actually um, helped with, with um, studying too. Like you said, just to go deeper, there's more than one level. And, and to just keep on digging. Like after you, even if you think you got it, it's still another level that you could receive more revelation from. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Okay. Mm. For me, it just represented my life. Like, mm. and when you're talking, it just reminded me of when I was going through stuff when I was 16 and daddy told me that y'all told him to let me go, wow. to let me go, basically to wean me off, to, you know, so I could grow. And I did. I ended up growing and, you know, changing and maturing in him. And I see a complete change in me from then to now or from like last year to now. So this just this just represents the the letter just represents me as a whole. Like it just really it really gave clarification. So thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. 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 It's not Hallelujah. by happenstance that the gimel represents the camel or also represents a foot. Um, when you look at gimel, it's like a journey as well. You know, you're yes. moving on a journey. And so as you were saying, uh how the most high has dealt with you, Kiki, is the journey. We all have a journey that we're on and that we're seeking and searching. So we have to just continue to, to follow the path and stay with the creator on the journey. Hallelujah. 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 Another example of that, when you said your, your father had to let you go, um, um, for those who are familiar with gardening and growing your own food, um, sometimes you don't grow from seed. Sometimes you'll go and buy a seedling or a small plant. And when you buy this small plant, it's it's in a pot. It's encased in a pot, right? Um, and if it stays in that pot, if it has something holding on to it the whole time, it will never grow. But once you take it out of that pot, once you remove what's holding on to it, once you remove what's holding back the roots from digging deep, from going past the surface, from going deeper into the soil in which it's getting its nutrients, it flourishes. It's the same thing with the Most High Yah and a father. You gotta let go. You gotta remove what's holding them. You gotta remove what's confining them. It's our job to teach them from their youth so that when they do start to doing things and when they do start to making uh, decisions that go against what you taught, you take your hands off and you allow the most high to take it from there. And if what you taught was in them, it's going to come to the surface. It's going to come to the surface. And the most high does the same thing with us. When you first come into the understanding and the knowledge of the most high, Yah, it's like things are happening left and right and all the time and you can always hear and you always see them and you always getting blessing and you always coming out of a, a situation with favor. And then once you start being in it for a while, he starts to remove himself. He starts to back away. You don't hear from him that often. You don't, you might not see, you see, you see him, but you might not see it particularly with you that often, but he's still there. And that's your opportunity. That's the weaning process. That's the maturing. He's waiting for you to produce fruit. So Gimel is that which completely uh, represents all of those things that we said. 
And I hope that um, you learned something new. I hope that the most high poured something in you um, that will stimulate you, that will provoke you to dig deeper, to go further and not stay at uh, her shop. Hallelujah. And, you, and you guys um, actually um, expressing, especially Kiki on her um, dad letting her go is just, it, it, it's, it says something to us as mothers too, because I think we hold on tighter than dads do, especially for our girls. And to hear that, you know, even your example of a um, plant, how we're stifling them to grow if we don't let them go, if we don't remove the boundaries, if we don't remove the the crutches that we give them as we, as we think that we're doing a service to them as mothers, but it could be a disservice and a hindrance in their growth as well. So that was definitely good. And even, even as a teacher, like you said earlier, you just given us the tools, it's up to us to dig deeper. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I would definitely like to segue into this uh, conversation. Uh, can you pull back up uh, the slide where you have uh, Gimelu Kasadim on there in Hebrew? Right there. Did anybody else feel lost when they seen those Hebrew words? Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was trying to read them. You was trying to read them? Okay. Yeah. So he, he put the Hebrew on there. Uh and so our goal and desires that we all are able to see that and be able to read it without any hindrance, right? Go ahead and stop sharing up. So that'll segue into this. Amen. Hallelujah. Basics of biblical Hebrew. Can y'all see that? Yes. Basics of biblical Hebrew. All right. So we want, if you want to learn the basics of biblical Hebrew, um, we are starting a class on the basics of biblical Hebrew. Uh, we had our first little trial run on monday um with dj and sister tanya they end up buying the book and uh dj and i were talking about going into just doing a little studying together and we came up with the idea as we got on we didn't come to each other's house dj was like well let's just zoom so we zoomed and we met and was like you know what let's go ahead and just do a class so if anybody would like to join in on the class it's going to be monday uh I want to make sure it's either seven or eight o'clock, probably an hour long class. And we're going to go through the chapters of uh, the book. The slides that I sent you guys or the charts are from this book. I also have videos that I can email to everybody. But one of the requirements to the class is you have to get the book. If you want to join the class, look this book up, get the book. And then we'll join the class. That way we can all be on the same level. We can read at the same pace and we can grow at the same pace. Hallelujah. 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 I just like to say that class is helping. It's bringing a lot of stuff back. Plus I'm learning more. Uh, it encourages me to, to learn more on my own. So I, uh, I'm excited about this portion of it too. Hallelujah. And I, when you actually put it on the screen, I can, when I can see it, I can, I actually know what I'm looking at. I know what that letter is. Hallelujah. 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 All praise to the creator of the universe. Hallelujah. All right. Are there any further questions or comments? Any further questions? It's the book on Amazon. Yes. Yes, you can get it on Amazon. They actually have a whole package. It's we have the second edition. They have a, a, a third edition, but this is the edition that we have. You could probably get it uh 
from like used books on Amazon for cheap. Um, they also have a workbook that you can get with it. Uh, if you can, they have another package where it comes with the uh, Hebrew charts and uh, videos as well. But I have the Hebrew charts, like what I emailed you guys. I have the the charts and I have the video. So that's why I said, if you just want to get the book and maybe the workbook, um, it's on you. Uh, but uh, definitely I can... I can uh, give you the videos and the charts. I can email you the video and the charts. And so it, it goes hand in hand. So once we read the chapter, we'll go over, we'll um, familiarize ourselves with the letters. And then if you watch the video and then we'll come back together and we'll we'll do some sort of testing uh, just to familiarize ourselves. And as we were talking about uh, with that class, after getting through the first three chapters, you should be able to look at, as he as he pulled up, you should be able to look at and at least read it without the understanding. Now, uh, vocabulary is a different thing. And that's something that we would have to do continuously uh, to understand uh, biblical Hebrew, uh, continuously learn vocabulary words and the meaning of these words. All praises. Can you, um, can I ask when you, Monday, can you send the invite out? Probably, well, I, cause I didn't get a DJ forward it to me. Okay. But so I'll, I'll have it in, in my um, text, text message. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Go ahead. Thank I'm you. I kind of, uh, I, you know, I've been at work this whole time. That's why I'm, I really wasn't, I mean, I was here, but I was just not really here. But uh, you, I remember glancing at the screen and you was talking about the camel. Uh, I forgot what slide it was, but it was it was saying that the camel extends, the camel itself extends acting loving kindness and, and helps out the man. I just want to, is that, is that exactly what it says? Say it again. Is, am I saying it right? The the camel extends the kindness and uh, helps hum, the human. Absolutely, it, it, ex ex it extends itself by yielding itself. Um, it carries the load. It, right, it puts the human where it needs to go. Um, it utilizes its abilities because the man doesn't have those abilities. So it's metaphoric, but. It, it actually happens. You understand? So the loving kindness aspect of it is metaphoric or right. but in him doing that, you know, it's something to be learned from the camel that he yields himself. He's a strong animal that really, if, if he didn't want to do what the man is asking him or behooving him to do, he didn't have to, but he lowers himself down. You see the position he was in. He lowers himself Right, those things to be uh, added on to him, burdens, cargoes, and then he he does uh, what the man can't do, which is travel miles, you know, uh, to get him to a destination. So that's an act of loving kindness. An act of loving kindness is when you do something for someone that they can't do for themselves, just because right. you can do it. And I, I just wanted you to repeat that because I just like that idea coming in with the way I look, the way I was originally looking at it was like a man's dominance over animals. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I didn't look at the, at the aspect of the animal actually showing acts of loving kindness and lowering himself to the man to help him. You yeah. know, he, and he didn't have to. And that's just, that's just a beautiful way that you put that together. I just want to say. All praise to the creator. And that reminds me, I said something about pride and nobody asked. Nobody said, well, what about pride? I said, we're going to get to that later. And nobody raised their hand. I didn't but, raise my hand because I thought you said it was going to be on the next uh, lesson. No. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Y'all yeah, didn't think that because I didn't say that. It's recorded. It's, it's recorded. Yeah. It's recorded. It's recorded. It's I didn't say that. All you right. And so, I'll do it later. Later could mean another time. No, yes. No, no, no. no. I said we're going to revisit <laughs> that later, but y'all, but you're right. You're accurate. Uh, I call T. Jerry. What about pride? Ah, I knew it. I knew it right on time. Right on time. I knew you was gonna do that. I knew it. I shouldn't even. I shouldn't even say nothing. So let's think about um, 
everything that we learned about Gemel or the camel to be a giver, acts of loving kindness, to give and take back in the same way and representing love, to reward and punish at the same time, but for the good of the man or the person. If a person is in a, in a position to where they always can be a blessing, to where they have things, to where it's always somebody that they are in a position to be blessing, sometimes they can look down on people. Sometimes they can take the abilities that the Most High gave them and raise themselves up to a position where now I'm looking down on you. I'm prideful. When you're supposed to be doing it out of love for that person to get them where you are, instead you're doing it in, in the terms or vernacular of, of the streets, you're doing it to uh, defecate on them. You're doing it to show them that you're better than them. So we got to do this in Time the spirit shine. of the Most High. Yeah, exactly. You shining on them. Don't shine you're on them. You're not doing it in the right spirit. You're doing yeah. it like, oh, yeah, I got it. That's nothing. You're not doing it because, hey, I got you. I want you to get here. Let me show you how to get this so you can be the same way to somebody else. The most high don't do it to shine on us. The most high do it because he love us. It's nothing that we can give back to him. It's nothing that he need from us. It's no position and way that we can, you know, uh, be in his position. He does it because he loves us in his benevolence. And that's why, and that's how we're to emulate him in acts of loving kindness. So don't get prideful. Don't think mm -hmm. that, um, because you're in a position today, you might not be in that position tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So do things in the spirit of the Most High Yah. Do things in the spirit of the Ruach HaKodesh. Do things in acts of loving kindness so that you're raising somebody up and not doing it to keep them down. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it for others because you do it for the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Hallelujah. I see what you did there, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any any other questions? Sky devices, sky. Pad 10. Hallelujah. That's my problem. I have a question. This is Iva Sutherland. We know who you are, Ima. Aren't we supposed to always be humble and not prideful? When we have, you know what I mean? When we have, aren't we supposed to be humble and thankful for what we have and not prideful? I'm, I'm going to answer that by saying this. Um, we're supposed to keep the Shabbat. We're supposed to reverence Yah and all that we do. Right. We're supposed to... Uh, uh, go to our brother if we have something wrong with us. We're supposed to honor our mother and father. So you're absolutely right. We're supposed to do that. But in actuality, the vast majority of us don't. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of us let the things and the vanities of the world get to our head and we operate in the fashion of the world instead of operating in the fashion of the most high Yah. So you're right. We're supposed to be humble in how we approach people uh, but you got to remember, we are human. True. Sure. We are we are spirits in in this in this flesh, and sometimes if we're not careful, if we're not grounded, if we're not seeking the Creator, seeking the kingdom and all of His righteousness, this flesh can take control. So, uh, you're right. We're supposed to be humble in how we approach people. We're supposed to operate in love in all things. Right. And a lot of times, myself included. The flesh can get the best of us sometimes. Um, That's true. But all praise to the Most High. Yeah, he shows us mercy and we can get it right. All right. right. All right. Thank you. Told on, Mama. Told on. I like to say, too, that at least for me, I, I, my prayers always say, y'all keep me humble because I notice you can operate in pride and not even realize it. And if you get too far in it, even when somebody tells you, you won't mm -hmm. receive it. So I always ask y'all to keep me humble, and he'll do it. And in, in I'll in ever since he has humbled me to keep me here. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Um, you just said something that was a mouthful, 
Yes. You don't want Yah to humble you. You might as well humble yourself. You do mm -hmm. not want Yah to humble you. Mm -hmm. You want to humble yourself. You want to go before him. You want to recognize. You want to have the understanding that Abba, you know what? Teach me to humble myself. Because when Yah humble you, man, mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard place to be in. And he going and he gonna make sure you humbled. Mm -hmm. He gonna make sure you at a place where it's no confusion, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. I'm humbling myself, Abba. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So you might as well attempt to do that on a daily basis and humble yourself and ask for mercy and see yourself as you are. You are but flesh. You are his ruach in the flesh, but still flesh. It's temporary. Mm. So I'm glad you brought that up. Hallelujah. 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 Vitayana. Shabbat shalom, baby. Shabbat shalom, sweetie. Cain, Shabbat shalom. <coughs> Khalil, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Kiana's phone. Shalom alaikum. Shalom alaikum. Shalom alaikum. Shalom alaikum. Shalom alaikum. Shalom alaikum. Nikki. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Caleb J. Shabbat Shalom. Mm -hmm. Somebody left when I said Shabbat Shalom. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. iPhone 6. Shabbat Shalom. That's Donald. Donald Wayne in that thing. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Aki Caleb. Um, I believe this is my first time seeing your name. Uh, you, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Nice that you came. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully the Most High Yah imparted something in you that you can take with you, that you can glean from for the rest of the week. And uh, you're welcome if you come in peace. Hallelujah. 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 Who is that, Yanni? <laughs> Uh -huh. Who is that? Um, that's Caleb. Y'all met him. Oh, you huh? heard him. How many you heard him? That's Caleb. Who? Show, show your face. Show your face. I never met no Caleb. 